Hello guys, welcome to another video. In this video, we are going to talk about absorption costing. It is also called full costing. So guys, first we need to quickly refresh the basic definition. Although these definitions we have already covered in the previous videos, I mean, in the introduction to the costing. So, and but we need to quickly repeat those definition in order to understand the absorption costing. So here we go, guys. So first of all, the total cost can be divided into the production cost and into the non-production cost. Production costs are those costs which you will incur during the production process to make the product. Those are called production costs. And production cost can be divided into three categories. One is called direct material. Second is called direct labor cost. And third is called factory overhead cost. Okay. And non-production cost can be divided into selling cost and administration cost. So here we go, guys. So starting with the first material, because here the word is written direct material, but let's understand quickly what is the cost of material. Guys, the cost of material can be divided into two categories. One is called direct material and second is called indirect material. So what is the main difference between direct and indirect, guys? So first, starting with the direct, direct materials are those tangible inputs, tangible inputs to the manufacturing process. Tangible means it has physical existence that can practically be traced to the product. And these costs are going to be the part of the product. Like usually if, if any material which is identifiable, first word is identifiable and it is, it is the major part of the product. Okay. And third, it has a major cost. Okay. Then it is called direct material. For example, if you are manufacturing, for example, table, table is our product. So maybe you are using wood. So wood is identifiable. It is the major part of the product and it has the major cost. And maybe you are using plastic. So if these three conditions are met, if material is identifiable, it is the major part of the product and it, it has a major cost. The amount and the cost is not negligible. So we will say it is a direct material. So same way to manufacture that table, maybe you might use some indirect material also. Like, like for example, maybe glue or maybe nails. So because these glue or nails are also tangible input to the manufacturing process, but that cannot be practically be traced. Why? Because if these three conditions will not met, maybe it is not identifiable or maybe it is not the major part of the product or maybe it has the amount, the cost is negligible. If this is the scenario, so we will assume this material is indirect material and guys indirect material will become the part of overhead cost. Okay. So then we have here, we have a direct labor cost. I mean, so we have a labor cost, same way labor can be divided into direct or into indirect. So if you want to see what is the main difference, actually the labor cost is the cost of human labor that can practically be traced to the product. Okay. For example, uh, let me just give you example. You can put these three points to understand. For example, these are these, this is the cost of those workers engaged in altering the conditions or composition of the product. Like these are those people who are directly working in the production, but these are not janitorial staff. I mean, so these are those costs or this is the cost of those labor which are directly connected with the production. For example, if you will visit any production process, you might see their janitorial staff like cleaner, sweepers working in the production, but those are indirect because they are not directly connected with the, with the, with the production. Okay. Maybe supervisor, they are not directly connected with the production because the supervisors are not engaged in altering the condition or the composition of the product. So direct means that these people, this, these are the wages of those people who are directly connected with the people that is called direct. And if you can't uh, relate the labor with the directly with the production, that is called indirect, like indirect might include what supervisors or maybe janitorial staff. Okay, guys. So this is what is called indirect and don't forget indirect labor will be the part of overhead. Okay, guys, so then we have a third category, which is called overheads. What are the overhead guys? So in simple words, we will, we can say overheads cost. These are those costs. These are the indirect costs. Indirect means that these costs cannot be practically be traced into the product. Okay. Uh, in simple words, we can say this way also overhead costs are those costs 
okay these are those cost of the manufacturing that are not direct material nor direct labor so that is called what overhead cost and overhead cost mostly includes three categories which three categories under overhead we have a three number one is what it might include indirect material it might include indirect labor and it might include factory operating cost as i have already explained to you what is the indirect material or indirect labor so what are the factory operating cost factory operating cost are also known as general overhead so it might includes what it might includes utilities real estate taxes insurance of factory plant and machinery depreciation of factory plant and machinery okay guys so these cost are called what you are operating cost i mean to say indirect cost this is is going to be the part of overhead then guys we have here selling and administration cost now let's let's understand first what is the selling cost guys selling or marketing cost are those cost incurred in getting the product from the factory to the consumer okay for example it might include salesman salaries advertising expense product transportation out cost okay then you you might have a administration cost administration cost are those cost incurred by the company not directly related to the producing or marketing the product i mean so these are those cost which are not the production cost and these are also not the selling cost so those costs are called what administration like for example executive salaries depreciation on the headquarters building rent on the warehouse containing inventory because in warehouse we are not producing the product actually actually where in warehouse we are storing the product so rent of the warehouse will be the part of administration cost okay guys so here you please don't forget these are the production okay in in short if you want to see in the production cost how many cost totally we have guys in production cost we have here direct material direct labor and we have overheads okay direct material is always your variable cost direct labor is also your variable cost and overheads might be variable or fixed okay like variable is what variable might be indirect material or labor and maybe and the factory operating cost like rent insurance these kinds of overhead cost are called what fixed cost okay this what is the basic introduction now guys here we go we have here, here another definition because i am repeating these definitions to understand that you know absorption costing so here guys we have here product cost what is the product cost actually product cost is also called inventoryable cost okay and these cost are going to be the part of the inventory i mean so these cost are capitalized as part of the finished goods inventory and ultimately these cost will be the component of cost of goods sold because invent inventory i mean say if closing inventory is there so closing inventory will be the part of your cost of goods sold okay so and mostly this product cost might include what cost of direct material cost of direct labor and it may it will includes the manufacturing overhead cost also depending upon the costing method which costing method you are using on the other hand that is we will discuss don't you worry and on the other hand we have another definition which is called period cost period cost are always recorded as a expense as incurred they are not capitalized in the finished goods inventory so that is why the period cost are not going to be the part of cost of goods sold so these costs are excluded from the cost of goods sold okay so we will discuss what it is okay uh, and the period cost mostly in theory we we assume that period cost are caused by passage of time and would occur even if the production is zero okay then guys here we have a costing method we have a variable costing i mean say marginal costing and we have a absorption costing if you remember i told you the production cost can be divided into direct material direct labor and overheads factory overheads and factory overheads have two types variable and fixed okay because i'm not going to explain variable costing guys my topic is absorption costing in this video so what we are going to talk about here guys so as per absorption costing theory all the production cost all the production cost should be the part of the product and these cost is going to be the part of the product cost so that is why it's called full production cost it means we will include what we will include direct material direct labor variable overhead and fixed overhead of the production and you know direct material is your variable cost direct labor is also variable cost 
and overheads could be variable or it could be fixed but all the overhead we will take it to the product okay and then guys under the non production under the non production we have a two cost which cost we have a selling cost which is also called selling and marketing and we have a administration cost so these selling cost and administration cost are treated as a period cost under absorption costing okay now if you will look at here but on the on the other hand in the variable costing if you remember in the previous video i have already explained so only variable production cost will be the part of the product only variable production so variable production will include these three cost which three it will include direct material direct labor and variable overhead not the fixed overhead okay so these three cost is uh, are going to be the part of product cost under variable costing or marginal costing okay so what is left now the left is fixed cost and all selling and administration cost and mostly these are treated as what period cost okay fixed production cost and all selling and all administration so what is the main difference difference is the fixed production cost this fixed production cost is treated as period cost under variable costing but this fixed production cost is treated as a product cost under absorption costing okay guys this is the main difference rest of the things is almost same so here we go guys so here we have a quick note because my topic uh, we are going to move to the now main topic guys so here guys we have a quick note the variable costing this is for the marginal costing marginal costing can be used only for internal reporting purpose but absorption costing can be used for what external reporting purpose and absorption costing is allowed by ifrs and us gaap because when you are preparing income statement for external reporting purpose there we are actually by default we are following absorption costing and under absorption costing profit is measured in terms of gross profit and net income but under variable costing profit is measured in terms of contribution and net income i mean say operating income okay so and this uh, marginal costing is not allowed by ifrs or us gap so here we go guys so let's move to the absorption costing now now guys here first theoretical points we are going to discuss the practical reasons for using the absorption costing like as per absorption costing as i told you full production cost will be the part of product which will include cost of direct material cost of direct labor variable overhead and fixed overhead so these all cost will be the part of the product so why we need to add all these costs so there are practical reason number one is what so we we will use absorption costing to value the inventory this is the first point we also we will we are also using absorption costing for the pricing decision also and we are also using the absorption costing to establish the profitability of different product like here we go guys for example because inventory first this point i'm going to explain inventory valuation inventory valuation like inventory in hand must be valued for two reason which two reason guys first is what because this inventory you are going to record if this inventory is unsold so you are going to record as a current asset in the balance sheet so what is the cost what is the cost because in balance sheet even under financial reporting you have to record inventory at lower of cost or naturalizable value or market okay so here depending you are using gap or ifrs so here guys so that is why we need inventory value to record in the statement of financial position and second thing we also need the inventory value to record in the income statement because this inventory value will be the part of cost of goods sold okay guys and mostly because if your inventory values are not correct it is going to affect your cost of goods sold also okay guys because mostly how we calculate the cost of goods sold we we always take cost of goods produced like how much cost you have incurred to manufacture the product plus we add their value of opening inventory minus what value of closing inventory this is how you will get the cost of goods sold if your inventory values for example if you will overstate your closing inventory automatically your cost of goods sold will be understated okay and if you will understate your closing inventory your cost of goods sold will be overstated and ultimately if your cost is wrong your profit is going to be affected okay because if you if you are if your cost of goods sold is higher your profit will be lower if your cost of goods sold is lower your profit will be higher so second is what pricing decision as i told you guys we also need to know the cost of inventory or the value of inventory for the pricing decision because whenever you want to set the price guys 
so you always need to know the correct cost first because for if you know the cost in the cost we will add our profit margin this is how we set the sale price if your cost is not correct of course your sale price will also be wrong okay third is what guys we want to establish the profitability of different products for example if a company if a company sells more than one product it will be difficult to judge how profitable each individual product is unless overheads cost i mean say total overhead cost including variable and fixed are shared on a fair basis and charged to the cost of the sale of each product like if your cost is not correct if you will not charge your overheads to the product okay under the absorption costing if you will not charge the overhead cost to the product of course your cost information will be wrong so that is why you can't establish the profitability of the different product accurately okay guys so this is what is the theoretical points now here we go we are going to discuss now actually how to calculate the product cost product cost means to say inventoryable cost and here i am going to calculate the cost of one unit for example and this unit i mean to say this is our product a okay this is our product a and here just i am discussing format and after that i will show you couple of questions to understand in better way so guys as i told you so under absorption costing if you want to calculate cost of one unit so what you have to include you have to include cost of direct material for example as i told you let's assume you are manufacturing table okay and you are in table your table is product a and for each table you need for example 10 kg of material okay which is called kg per unit per finished unit we need 10 kg and for each kg we are paying the price of 5 dollar so if you are using 10 kg for one table and price is 5 dollar so it means 50 dollars you need for the material this is how you will write the material cost in the cost card second is what direct labor for example to manufacture one table we need five labor hours five labor hours okay labor hours per unit we need five times what is the rate we are paying 15 dollar for each hour to the labor so 5 time 15 so this is going to be 75 dollar so this is how you will write the labor in the cost card now guys when it comes to the production overhead in the production overhead guys we have two types of overhead we have variable overheads variable overhead might include indirect material indirect labor utilities okay or even depreciation but if depreciation method ties with the unit of output okay if depreciation you are using for depreciation straight line or reducing balance method then it is it is it should be the part of fixed okay and the production overhead can be divided for the fixed overhead also and how you will charge production overhead like variable and fixed to the product this is what i'm i'm going to explain now guys and i will tell you that then later note there is a really important note okay so here we go guys here first in the format i'm going to deal variable overhead separately and fixed overhead separately so how you will deal with it so let me just start with the first fixed overhead and then we will come back for the variable overhead guys for the fixed overhead please remember guys this is how you will deal for the fixed production overhead we are going to discuss here guys step number 1 you know what you have to do for the fixed cost we need to calculate the overhead recovery rate this overhead recovery rate is also called overhead absorption rate it is also called overhead applied rate okay and this rate we will always calculate at the start of the year okay because the fixed cost you are going to incur throughout the year okay but today at the start of the year we will sit and we will estimate these cost why because we can't wait for the actual results the reason is that there might be seasonal fluctuations okay if you will charge actual fixed cost to the product maybe in the first if your fixed cost assume it is $10000 let's assume in the first unit you produced only one unit it means you are going to charge $10000 uh, to one product in next month maybe for example your again fixed cost for that month is 10000 divided by you produce 20000 units it means next month next month maybe you are going to charge only 0.5 dollar of the overhead to the product so that is why it is not good because your cost will fluctuate if you will wait for the actual data so that is why the practice is that so you have to calculate overhead recovery rate 
or the overhead absorption rate or the overhead applied rate at the start of year to avoid the seasonal fluctuations. Okay, guys. And how you will determine this overhead recovery rate. So here we have a formula. Overhead recovery rate. This is how you will calculate, guys. So you need first total estimated. Word is estimated. I mean, it's a budgeted. Fixed overhead cost for all products. For all product, maybe if you are producing product A, B, C. So you need to estimate the overhead cost because this overhead cost should be shared between all these products by using some fair basis. Okay. So that is where first you need to estimate fixed overhead cost for all the product. So here I have given the name A. So divided by total estimated activity level for all product. Okay. Estimated activity level. Here keyword is activity level. And again, it's an estimated. I mean, it's a budgeted. It means overhead recovery rate is the budgeted. So let's understand now, guys. What does mean by A first? A mean to say total budgeted overhead, fixed overhead cost for all product. For example, guys, so this is the budgeted, our budgeted information. Okay. And by the way, question will be provided, but practically you have to estimate. For example, our total estimated fixed overhead. I'm using this is for the fixed overhead. Okay. For the fixed overhead, we have, for example, insurance cost, budgeted insurance cost is 5,000. Rent cost is, for example, 90,000. Depreciation cost by using straight line basis, for example, 5,000. So this is our total fixed cost is 100,000. So this is what is the estimated. So we will place as a numerator here. Now I'm going to talk about guys, denominator. Denominator is what? Budgeted activity level, which is called B. And guys, B mean to say, budgeted activity level. Here we have a B guys now. We are talking about total or budgeted activity level. Guys, there are different activity levels which we can use. For example, we can use a machine hours to allocate the overhead. If your work is machine intensive, we can use labor hours also. We can use units or output. We can use other bases also. Now, the point is that which is the best appropriate base to allocate the overhead. Guys, please, you have to remember practically if your work is machine intensive, machine intensive means to say most of the work is done through the machines or automation, then what is the best use? The, we should use what machine hour as an allocation base, as activity level, okay? If our work is labor intensive, I mean, say most of the work is done through the labor, then labor hours are the best appropriate base to allocate the overhead. But we can, if maybe machine hours or labor hours information is not available, we can also use the units or the output as an activity level. So we will use Units are output as activity level if units are identical, okay? So, or it could be, it could be the percentage of prime cost. Prime cost, you know, maybe in your exam, examiner might tell you overhead cost is 10% of prime cost. Prime cost means to say cost of direct material plus cost of direct labor and plus direct expense, if any. So, this is called your prime cost. If you will take the 10% of that, this is called your overhead cost, okay, guys? So, it could be any other base, but the practically you have to check the, your work is machine intensive or labor intensive, okay? Or sometime examiner will tell you straight away, like you have to use machine hours or labor hours or maybe units of output to allocate the overhead, okay? So for example here, I'm assuming now we are going to learn how to estimate, how to estimate activity level for all product, which was the numerator, uh, denominator in the formula, okay, guys? So here we go, for example, I'm assuming here, for example, this company. So we are going to estimate activity level in hours. And I'm using here labor hours as a appropriate absorption base. Okay, guys. So for example, company is manufacturing three product, product A, B, and C. I'm assuming, I'm assuming, okay. We are manufacturing three products. So first of all, you will take estimated output. And say how many units you are planning to produce we, for example, for A, we are planning to produce 1,000, for B, 5,000, for C, 4,000 units. We will multiply this times labor hours per unit, labor hours per unit, because our appropriate base is labor hours, I'm assuming, okay? So, for example, for product A, we need five labor hours to produce one unit. For product B, we need two labor hours. For product C, we need one labor hour. So, what you will do, guys? So, simply you will multiply units with the hours. So, you will get total hours, total labor hours. Here we have a 5,000. Here you have a 10,000. Here you have a 4,000. So guys, you need to make total of this, total of all now. Even you are calculating the cost of the product A in my example, but still when you want to recover the, when you want to calculate overhead recovery rate, so guys, you will use total hours. 
total for all product is how much 19,000 labor hours. This should be used in calculation of overhead recovery rate. Don't make mistake. Maybe in exam, he will ask you to calculate the product cost of product C only. You know what you mistake you will make? Maybe you will divide this 4,000 hours here. No guys, we have to divide total hours of all product as a denominator, okay? Which is 19,000 in my example. So this calculation, we will take it uh, to the formula. Now guys, please remember here, if you are producing only one product, it means till here you have to solve only. If you are producing two product, make two column. If you're producing three product, make three column. If you're producing 10 products, make 10 columns and estimate total hours, okay guys? So here we go, we have estimated. So calculate the recovery rate, which was the step number one for the fixed overhead. So this was the, here we are here now. This was the formula to calculate the recovery rate. Estimated overheads for all product, which was 100,000 and estimated activity level. I mean, say labor hours because we are using it is 19,000. So once you will divide overhead cost with the labor hours, you will get overhead recovery rate, which is dollar 5.26 per labor hour. Okay, once you got this rate, so you are done with the step number one, which is called overhead recovery rate. Now step number two is what? You have to charge these overheads to the product and how you will charge guys, how you will charge. So don't forget our recovery rate is overhead. Recovery rate is $5.26 per labor hour. This is our recovery rate. Okay guys, and now I want to charge the product. So guys, if I want to charge the product, for example, maybe I want to calculate the cost of product A. So we are going to what charge the overhead recovery rate to the product. Maybe you are calculating the cost of the product A. And I, I want to calculate cost of one unit, only one unit. For, for A, how I will calculate? I will take guys, this is what charging I'm charging, okay? I will take overhead recovery rate per labor hour times labor hours per finished product of unit A, per unit for the product A. Okay, overhead recovery rate is 5.26 times, times labor hours per unit is how much? Five labor hours, five labor hours. So once you will multiply, I guess you will get $26, which you will, $26.3, which you will take it to the product A. If you want to allocate to the product B now, for example, I want to allocate to the B, I will take same recovery rate, $5.26 per hour times for the B, I need how many hours? Two hours, so I will get for the B. If I want to allocate to the C, so what I will do, I will take same recovery rate, which is per hour, $5.26 per hour, multiply by time of C, which is one hour, okay? So I will get the overhead cost for the product C. Actually, it is allocated here, you can see here. Charge the overhead recovery rate to the product. For the product A, you will take overhead recovery rate per hour times labor hours for the product A. So recovery rate was this, labor hours was this for product A, you will get this cost. For the B, you will take rec same recovery rate multiplied by labor hours of the B. For the C, you will take same recovery rate multiplied by labor hours per unit for the product C. This is how you will allocate. So I'm calculating the cost of the one product, cost of the product A. It means only this value I need for the product A only. So this is what we will take. You will take it to the main cost card where we were calculating the cost of the product. Okay, guys. So we were assuming our cost of the product for the fixed cost, okay? What we will do, we will take actual activity level, which was, for example, five labor hours times what? Overhead recovery rate, which is $26. So this is how you will take fixed overhead. Now, guys, I'm, I'm going to talk about for the variable overhead. If you have created separate account for the variable overhead, so you will deal with the same way. Let me show you here, guys. So same way for the variable overhead, what you need to do, guys? For the variable overhead, we are assuming here, I'm assuming actually the variable overheads are absorbed based on units of output because fixed overheads uh, are being absorbed based on labor hours, but I'm assuming variable overheads are based upon units of output. So here again, guys, you have to calculate overhead recovery rate, okay, for variable overhead because here we are charging based on units. So I want to calculate directly per unit now, okay, guys, directly per unit. So how you, how I will do same, I will take budgeted variable overhead cost divided by budgeted units and budgeted overhead, variable overhead cost are includes indirect material, indirect labor and utilities. And this is what is their estimated variable overhead cost. So total is how much? 400,000. I will take this as a total cost divided by budgeted units are 10,000 assume 
for including product A, B, and C, it was ten thousand. Okay, so let's assume so we got here forty dollar per unit. I'm just explaining format. Okay, guys, a lot of value I'm assuming only because then I will take you to the practical question. So already this is forty per unit, and we are calculating the cost of one unit. Okay, cost of one unit. So here this value I will take it here the main cost format. So I will write it here in front of variable overhead. Okay, okay, guys. So sometime maybe maybe please guys remember if in the overhead recovery rate when you calculate the overhead recovery rate you need total budgeted overhead cost budgeted overhead cost divided by budgeted activity level activity level as i told you activity level could be hours could be units could be machine hours could be labor hours it could be any other base but if if these are hours so you will get here overhead recovery rate per hour and when you want to convert Per unit, per unit, you will take overhead recovery rate per hour, which you have calculated here. Multiply by number of hours we need to produce that unit. Number of hours, okay? Number of hours, and don't make mistake. Don't do this if you have used here labor hours. So you have to multiply here overhead recovery rate labor per labor hours. Multiply by number of labor hours per unit. If you have used here machine hours, try to understand what I'm saying. So you will get overhead recovery rate per machine hour. So then you have to multiply with with what number of machine hours? Okay, guys, don't multiply overhead recovery rate per labor hour with the machine hours. No, recovery rate per labor hour should be multiplied with the labor hours. Recovery rate per machine hours should be multiplied with the machine hours. Okay, of that unit. Okay, guys, don't make mistake this one. This is how you will calculate, guys. This is how you will calculate. the product cost full cost and which includes cost of material cost of labor cost of variable overhead and cost of fixed overhead so this is what is our total cost now guys i want to tell you one important note so here you have noticed that what we have done here we have we have dealt the production overhead variable overhead separately and fixed overhead separately but now guys actually for the absorption costing you even uh, practically you don't need to make distinguish between variable overhead and fixed overhead you can club you can club this overheads both overheads together if the activity level is the same so you can come charge together this is what i'm going to deal now with the help of example i hope you will understand guys so here we go here we have a node guys because this node we are going to actually continue with the help of example for example we can combine variable overheads and fixed overheads and one overhead recovery rate can be calculated for both because previously we calculated a uh, separate recovery rate for variable overhead and separate recovery rate for fixed overhead so now i'm going to club so here we go guys with the help of example let's see we have a small question we have a s company s company a chocolate manufacturer produce three products which three products sky bar moon egg and sun bar these are three our products and this is what is our information is available information relating to each product is this one so this is our product sky bar moon bar and sun bar okay guys so here we have the first information he told you he told you a direct labor cost per unit in dollar this is dollars so okay labor cost is given straight away no problem then second what we he, he also told you direct material cost per unit in dollar great so this is the second line of the cost part is also available actual production or sales okay in units this is actual production or sales it means here production is equal to sale by the way we are assuming okay then we have a direct labor hours per unit labor hours per unit these are labor hours then we have a machine hours per unit then guys we have a selling price per unit for each unit this is the sale price then we have a annual production overhead 80000 and see guys here there is no difference between variable and fixed and one amount is provided so we can calculate one recovery rate no issue in that okay guys so what is the requirement here guys here because first let's read the requirement and then we will see what should be the base guys here they telling you using traditional absorption costing calculate the full production cost per unit and profit per unit for each product and comment on the implication of the figures calculated so you have to calculate the cost for each product and you have to calculate then profit for each product okay and then you have to comment so guys three thing you need to answer so guys here uh, let's understand first here guys uh, how you will calculate the cost of each product so here we go we are starting first 
because two things are directly given he told you cost of material he told you cost of labor here cost of labor is given here cost of material is given here for each product so problem with the overheads now you have to add here overheads and there is no difference between variable and fixed in this question so there is a one amount for the overhead which is given here 80000 this is what we need to add now it was problem what is the point because in question it is not uh, uh, this information is not given like which activity level we have to use to absorb the overhead or to calculate the recovery rate so guys but here we have a two options which two options you have you can use here we have a labor hours we have a machine hours if you will look at the labor hours per unit it means we are using less labor hours for example here you are using 0.01 hour machine hour this this is the machine hours okay if you will check which 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 quantity we are using more so in my opinion we are using more machine hours it means this work is more uh, machine intensive so that is why we should use machine hour as a activity level in the recovery rate calculation not the labor hours because labor hours are less machine hours are more so it looks this work is machine intensive so that is best the appropriate base so guys first i'm going to work with the overhead directly and then we will come back to the cost of the product so here we go guys whenever you want to calculate the overhead recovery rate first for the overhead guys you also always need to calculate the overhead recovery rate for the overhead recovery rate you need overhead cost which is given here $80000 it is given here and you need to divide it with the machine hours and i told you don't calculate the machine hours for one product you have to take machine hours for all product and how you will calculate here it is shown so what i will do here guys because i need machine hours so here if you will look at the information it told you machine hours per unit and simply you need to multiply with the number of units if you will multiply number of units with the machine hours this is the for the product a i mean it's the first product this is for the product b you will get this you will get for the product c so which you will divide here so this is how it will be calculated so here it is shown here guys overhead recovery rate we are calculating we need budgeted fixed overhead which is i mean it's a total overhead which is 80000 divided by machine hours for the sky bar this is the machine hours per unit and these are the number of units 500000 this is what for sky bar for the moon egg this is for the moon egg i mean it's a second product what is the name of second product let's confirm second product is moon egg yes moon egg third is sun bar this is for the moon egg for the moon egg machine hours are 0.04 and this is their production 150k this is for the sun bar uh, i mean it's a sun bar a huh? third product so this is the machine hours per unit this is their production so you will get if you will multiply these this information this is the total hours for sky bar this is the total hours for the moon egg this is the total bar for sun bar total hours so if you will add all these hours so this will give you how much 16000 hours just use your calculator and confirm so total of all these hours total of all these hours is going to be 16000 hours so now what you will do guys you have budgeted over at 80000 divided by total hours of all product which is 16000 so you will get rate overhead recovery rate you will get which is equal to dollar 5 per machine hour per machine hour now you want to calculate the product cost okay product cost but this is what is the recovery rate first we have to charge this recovery rate to all three products and how you will charge guys this is how you will charge this is the formula you will use note we can now absorb these overheads into the units of the production this is just i'm dealing first with the overhead guys so we will write the product name sky bar moon egg sun bar so production overhead in dollars for one unit we are calculating how you will do it guys you will take machine hours per unit multiply by overhead recovery rate per machine hour and you know overhead recovery rate you have calculated here here just we have calculated $5 per machine hour this is that value you will multiply this recovery rate per machine hour with machine hours per unit for each product for first product just look for the sky bar how many machine hours was there for one unit i guess it was if you look at the question for sky bar machine hours per unit was 0.01 this you will multiply with the $5 you will get overhead cost for moon egg this is the machine hours 0.04 you will multiply with the dollar 5 which is recovery rate you will get for the moon and this is what is for the sun bar you will multiply with dollar 5 recovery rate you will get overhead so if you will multiply these two guys 
So this is what you will get cost, overhead cost. So how you got overhead cost? We took machine hours per unit for each product, multiplied by overhead recovery rate, which is $5 per machine hour. So you got the cost for sky bar, cost for moon egg, and cost for sun bar. So this is what is the overhead cost. Now we can calculate the product cost, guys. Now we can calculate the product cost. We will write the three products, sky bar, moon egg, and sun bar. And guys, first you will write here direct labor cost or direct material, it's up to you. So direct labor cost is given in the question per unit. It is given in dollars. You will just bring it here. Direct material cost is also given in the question. Straight away, you will bring it here. Okay, and overhead cost. This is overhead cost, which you are going to add. Production overhead cost, just we calculated above now here for each product. If you will look at here, here, this is for each product. Okay, this overhead cost you will bring into the cost cart. Okay, guys. So this will give you what full production cost per unit. Production cost per unit. Okay, if you will add all these three costs, like these three costs. So this is what is called your full production cost. If you will add, this is your full production cost. Now, this is the first requirement of the question. Second was what? We have to calculate the profit or loss. So simply, you will compare the cost with the sale price. Sale price is given in the question also. And if you will take sale price minus cost, you will get profit. Sale price minus cost, you will get a loss here. Sale price minus cost, you will get here also profit. Now, guys, third option, third requirement was comment. If you will look at here, guys, your sky bar, sky bar product is profitable, okay? Because sale price is more than cost. Sun bar is also profitable because sale price is more than cost. But your moon egg is your loss making product and maybe first to make it profitable what we can do maybe we can increase the price price of this product or maybe we can cut the cost if you can't do these things so simply we can maybe shut down this product okay guys so this just we talked about only production cost product cost how to calculate the product cost by using absorption costing guys it is not yet finished in next class i will i will say the next window I will talk about directly what are the departmental rate versus plant-wide rate. Plus, I will talk about under and over absorption and income statement. Okay, guys. So, please keep watching. Thank you so much. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.